morning, folks. Ty Metalhead Weather Man here. Hopefully, everyone's doing well. Yesterday was a pretty crazy evening, actually, especially over towards South Dakota, where we had the threat of severe weather, 5% tornado threat. We actually got a pretty strong tornado that ended up happening in the rural areas of southern South Dakota, and central South Dakota. So, with that being said, there's another 5% risk today. This is going to be over towards Minnesota, over towards northern parts of Iowa, that we'll be keeping an eye on today. We will be going live for this, by the way. It's in a very familiar area. The other day, we were covering a line of storms that went through this region here. And it looks like the Twin Cities are under the gun once again. So a little later this afternoon is when the timeline when we can expect these storms to roll through. All risks are up to slight risk criteria with a 15% wind and hail threat to go along with that 5% tornado threat. As far as the setup today is concerned, this is the catalyst right here area of low pressure that's straddling the US Canadian border and we're going to have an adjacent shortwave that pops in along with it and you can even see it on the bottom left corner here with the HRRR at 700 millibars so we're looking towards the mid levels of the atmosphere in the bottom left and we're looking towards the upper levels of the atmosphere in the center so you can see we're going to have these pause at the exact same time frame here which is 23z we'll actually push it back to yeah I think actually 23z is the best is the best example of it but you can see clearly here with these little ripples within the ISO bars here is where our short wave is going to be and our storms are going to be along this region here this definitely has the look of a linear event so damaging winds and hail are probably going to be the main threat but a few tornadoes can't be ruled out especially with any storms that end up forming more isolated at first this is going to eventually consolidate into a line and weaken as we get further along into the night Another thing we'll, of course, be taking a look at is the low-level jet. We're looking for uh, looking for that uh, southerly flow here. And you can see that we have plenty of low-level jet even before the expected um, storm initiation would occur here. And it stays pretty persistent throughout, that, throughout uh, the whole day here. And it seems as if it really kind of ramps up right about 5 o'clock Central Time, 6 o'clock Eastern. So we'll be keeping an eye on that, of course, and I think this is where our tornado threat will be highest. I do, like I said, I do think damaging winds will come into play as well, especially as we get, as we get later into the evening. Well, and starting to probably see a decrease in uh, severe potential probably by about 9 o'clock central, I'd say. <clears throat> as far as moisture is concerned here, we've been talking about this over, over the last week. Going to be very sufficient moisture returns over towards the region here. Like I said, I really think peak time for tornado development might be a little bit after 5, 6 o'clock central here and kind of shifting more towards damaging winds as time goes on. And then as far as, far as uh, instability is concerned, we're looking really good over towards the region here. See the Cape diminishing from the Dakotas now, but watch what happens as we get into the early afternoon. That daytime heating hits and look at that. Even got a sounding from, over this, reg from this region over here. As we get towards uh, 22, 23Z, we still have about 3,000 joules per kilogram for mixed layer cape. Surface cape is actually even a little bit better. But if we were to go ahead and take a look at the sounding, have a nice looping hodiograph here on the uh, 0 to 3 kilometer here. We have our shear at a pretty solid level here. 17 is good, but uh, surface cape is nearly at 4,000. Uh, cloud bases are expected to be low so like I said good environment for tornadoes also a good environment for damaging ones as we mentioned earlier the uh, downward cape is at 1093 threshold is really about 600 once you get to 800 you're already hitting some big time numbers getting up to a thousand up to 1100 plus I think there could potentially be a hatch risk with this as well if uh, things continue to persist in the manner that they are right now but a lot of energy, a lot of um, a solid kinematic profile too, if I must say, to go along with that. Another thing that we're going to be keeping an eye on is any of these supercells that could form in the early part of the evening, they could very well be high precipitation. So if these tornadoes do form, there's going to be a chance that these will end up being rain wrapped. <clears throat> so last but not least here we're going to go ahead and take a look at what our simulated radar could look like let's actually go ahead and get up close and personal here <clears throat> my voice is going in and out and i do apologize for that by the way doing a whole lot of music stuff lately but here is the storm the anticipated storm initiation it's going to be about four o'clock really starts to ramp up by about five o'clock central time over here 
like I said, we're going to have to be watchful of any of these prefrontal cells because I think those will have the best chance of producing tornadoes. Eventually, of course, this consolidates into a line here. And by the time we get towards 8, 9 o'clock is when we'll probably see peak intensity for this thing. By the time we get later into the evening, let's say about 10 o'clock central, this is weakening. Still will have some severe potential, but won't be nearly the monster it was earlier in the afternoon if it ends up coming in, if this forecast ends up coming into fruition. But that being said here, it's pretty much all we got for this video. Pretty simple um, rundown of what we could expect today. There are some fail parameters as well that go into play here. Storms could just end up staying linear for the most part and the tornado threat may not verify, but the wind threat probably will. There's not much in the way of inhibition that really will slow this thing down. So as of right now, just something that, to uh, keep an extra close eye on as we go on throughout the day. Like I said, we'll be going live later this afternoon to cover this. That being said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. And until next time, take care.